Evening.O podcast in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Odd Dad Out podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host as always, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. And if you're new to the show, here's what I do. Uh, I tell my personal take on what's going on in life, what's going on in the world, what's going on in the news, some stories you may have heard, some you may not have heard, and some are just weird stuff that I want to make fun of. So, all of that being said, how you doing? Before we get anywhere, I just want to thank you for listening. I know most people kind of leave that to the end of the show, but maybe you're not going to make it to the end of the show today. Maybe, I don't know. So, I just want to get the thank yous out of the way. Thank you for clicking play this far. Okay, so... It's it's in 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 my little neck of the woods. It's it's just been a kind of a damn. I don't know about you, but for me when it starts warming up, my work schedule gets to be kind of hellish. Uh it's just kind of our busy season and as such if you've listened for a while, you know I work nights and I've got kids. I kind of do the Mr. Mom thing during the day, hence the odd dad out thing. Anyway, um, this sort of time of year is busy. It's it's just that point where, like, where I'm working out later, I'm getting home at like four o'clock, and then I get to turn around and do the whole, you know, take the kids to school and and, st- and be up with the little ones and all that sort of stuff. And so it's less and less time to get things accomplished. Just, like, trying to be a dad and, like, I guess... And I don't want to say this to demean my, my, my children or, like, I love being a dad. But sometimes being a dad kind of gets in the way of just being an adult or just getting to enjoy the things you want to enjoy. And then, and and again, not to put down like having kids, I love my kids, but because of my obligation to, you know, take care of my children, I, and then then my, my, my work schedule and the losing sleep there and about all that. and, And then coming on here to entertain you people, I I have very little time to do things myself. I don't have a lot of time. It's like I love TV. I love. I mean, I I really got into a lot of like. I'll say it. I'm a nerd. So I've I've got into like all of the DC CW shows. I got into a lot of. There's a lot of TV shows and things that I really got into that I am so far behind on right now. They're gonna be canceled before I ever get around to finishing them. Like, I'm an entire season behind on basically everything on CW right now. Like, all the superhero shows. Uh, and all that, that sort of stuff. And and half of that's because, like, is because I can't watch these shows when I'm off because my wife isn't as much of a nerd as I am, so I can't watch my nerdy shit. At the same time, I can't play, like, my video games and things like that because they're violent and... You know, suddenly slaying a dragon is a bad influence on the children, according to my wife. Now, the the fact that we have a particular reference where one of the boys tried to fight a dragon with one of daddy's swords, and it, the dragon in question happened to be his brother's playpen, might give evidence to her argument. But, you know, that that's that's like ancient history. That was like... Two or three years ago. I mean, it's it's way in the past. But, yeah, now I'm just kind of... I'm in that point where... I've got three boys at home. Summer is coming up, so soon all the boys are going to be home during the day. And I've got to entertain them. And that means I can't be doing my fun stuff. Which, I guess it's just kind of a bummer, I guess. It's... 
there's all this cool stuff that you want to do, but being both introverted and 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 trying to be responsible and and shit, you don't get to do those sort of things. Uh, I've I have and I guess the fact that I I'm responsible enough to put my obligations to my children before my own entertainment, and I guess you'd say the the common image of dads is that like dad is going to put video games over kids and dad's gonna like the dads are inept and so yeah the image and i i i honestly say i don't interact with people to know i really don't i assume i hope most dads aren't as cruddy as the imagery of what you see that most dads aren't going to sit there and and play Call of Duty while the kid is sitting there playing with forks and shit in the light socket. But I don't know. I have no reference for this because I don't have friends. I don't socialize, and I especially don't socialize with parents outside of my own siblings. So, yeah, I have no reference for this. I know my brother isn't like that. My brother also works full-time and has, he has a stay-at-home wife. So, yeah, we're kind of an opposite uh, end of that equation. But he, do, he doesn't neglect his daughter. And, well, my my other... My sisters all have older kids, so I don't... Like, they're in high school or graduated from high school and shit because my sisters are old and shit. Yeah, if you're listening, you're old. Sorry, sis. Both of you. But, anyway... <laughs> I don't know, I can never pass up a chance to call my big sisters old, even though I'm getting there too. <sighs> but, anyway, <laughs> just kind of, a, yeah, I've just been busy. And it's it's stuff like that, it's been pushing the show further and further behind. And it's it, it makes it tough to get on mic, not because I don't want to, but because, like today, I was like, shit, I'm still, I'm going to straight up tell you right now. I've got half of my prep done. <laughs> I've got stories. What is what stories am I going to tell? I don't know. Not quite yet because I didn't have the time to go through and sort through, hey, this is crap and that's crap and I'm not going to talk about that. That's a stupid story. So I've got a lot there's a lot on the plate today. So enough of my rambling about about video games and TV and crap. Let's just jump into the entertainment news. Okay. Now, I, I've said in the past, I don't like to get political. I, I don't, but it just so happens that one of this week's stories borders on political. So, this week, the networks went out and they announced what shows are getting renewed, what shows are getting canceled, what no, what's, what's the upfronts, I think they call it. Um, and... It, to everybody's surprise, ABC decided this time they're going to cancel Tim Allen's hit, Last Man Standing. Now, the reason this is surprising and the reason there, I say it's political is because there's been a big like, looming cloud over this cancellation after Tim Allen went on TV and did an interview and he kind of... because. He compared being a Republican in Hollywood to, like, Nazi Germany in the 30s, which got a lot of backlash, which, justifiably so, people thought it was it was insensitive and things like that. And it's, I mean, granted, people that complain about, the, it's one of those, listen to the whole interview, the explanation is baked in, but you're only nitpicking the one line that you were offended by. That being said, a lot of people are, like, a lot of super conservative people are complaining, saying that this is just ABC getting political, and because he is an outspoken Republican and very pro-Trump, and all of these things, that they're going, that they're going to cancel his show. And ABC came out and said, no, we cut the show because we don't own the show. Uh, apparently, uh, it's actually produced by Fox. 
I was like, we're licensing this show. We don't produce it ourselves. We don't own it. It, so we don't get as much money out of it. Licensing costs are going up and it's at six years, meaning Tim Allen is up for contract renewal, meaning this show is going to cost us even more to air and we're not really willing to pay any more money for a show we don't own. And we're moving all comedy out of Fridays, which I kind of, I call bullshit on that one because come on, you you shuffle time slots and things. They said, oh, we're cutting all comedy out of Fridays and we're putting in a new drama block, which incidentally is going to be made up of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and they're moving Once Upon a Time to Fridays. Okay. It's going to be Inhumans, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Once Upon a Time, and I forget what the hell they're going to stick at the tail end of it after whatever. But they're pulling all comedy out of Friday. Fine. Move the time slot. And I can kind of I understand that. A lot of people, but it's like the people that are complaining are like, oh, you canceled it because, uh, you know, Hollywood is all liberals and ca- and he's an outspoken conservative and all this stuff. And they're like, no, we didn't do it for that reason. We did it primarily for budgetary reasons. We just can't afford this show anymore. Even though it's doing well in the ratings, we just can't afford this show anymore, which happens. It totally happens. Uh, I'm not going to say that they, I don't think ABC canceled the show because of what Tim Allen said or his political views. Because if you've watched the show, they would have nixed this show a long time ago if it was for his political views. The entire point of this show is basically his political views. So that's not, that's just a BS excuse for people to complain about and people are trying to boycott ABC and shit like this. What's more likely is that ABC got a lot of flack from a super, like the, the super extreme, the people who were complaining about his uh, interview and people who complain about people who didn't watch the show to know what it was about and what the characters were like and how it was written are suddenly complaining about a show they don't watch. Well, those complaints eventually lead to ABC. Like they, they, they're covering their asses for a PR perspective. It's not like they're getting political. They're just too many people are yapping at them about something. They, you know, too many people are complaining about his political stuff when that's the point of the show. But they're they're just complaining enough to where ABC's like we don't need the heat anymore, uh, contracts are up. Let's just let the show go. That's that that really is. It's it's part a budgetary stuff. Part we're getting heat, so they're not playing politics. They're playing business. That's it. So that's that. All right. Next up, another hacker strike has hit Disney this time. With the new Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, has apparently been acquired and is slowly being leaked by hackers who intend, who ransomed it to Disney and say, hey, pay us X amount of money in Bitcoin, because hackers and Bitcoin, whatever, uh, pay us this ransom or we're going to leak this movie. Well, apparently, in the last couple of days, they've started leaking the movie, and this happened with Netflix a few weeks back with the new season of Orange is the New Black. Apparently what's happening is these hackers, rather than trying to hack Disney or trying to hack Netflix or whatever, they're hacking the production studios. They're hacking the, uh, like the, what is it? Not the labs, but the, uh, the, uh, visual effects studios and things like this that are doing the final edits and things like these. They're, hacking those guys because they tend to have lower security than Disney and Netflix and the big big company but the outsourced guy that's handling the final edits and thing little things like that they don't necessarily have the top level security so they're getting hacked these things are getting stolen 10 episodes of Orange is the New Black got released weeks early a few weeks a uh, little while back and now looks like Pirates of the Caribbean 5 is getting leaked, uh, I think it's about two weeks early. Because everybody's like, we're not paying a ransom. 
you know, you can claim all you want that you have the movie or you have the shows or you have the whatever. Go ahead. And you know what? I, from what I've heard, it didn't hurt Netflix. And I seriously doubt it's going to hurt uh, Disney. And, like, and for all I know at this point, I know they started releasing stuff earlier in the week. So by, I'm sure by the end of this week, they're, the whole movie will probably be available online. Now, there's two things about that. One, you have to go to like Pirate Bay or one of those places that, technically speaking, you're you're getting tracked if you go there. It's like most people aren't going to seek out unless they really, really want to do it. Like unless they really want to stick it to Disney, they're not going to seek out the new uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie on the Pirate Bay or some torrent site because it's just too much damn work. I mean, the people who were going to go after the leaked movie were the people who were going to be trying to hack the movie anyway. So I don't think it's really going to be a problem. So they can... They, hackers are dumb. Okay, to a certain level, hackers are geniuses, but hackers are stupid. It's like, they've got book smarts, they know how to hack a computer, but they're fucking idiots because they think that people are going to do, are, are more excited for things than they are. This is Pirates 5, people. People aren't really that excited for the Pirates of the Caribbean movies anymore. It's not Harry Potter. Uh, okay. To end entertainment news on an ups, on a, on a happy note, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep stories smaller this week, just on account of, I've got a lot. Uh, Big Bang Theory star Jim Parsons got married over the weekend, or this, this past week, to partner of 14 years, Todd, I'm, I'm, I hope I don't mess up, it's Spiewak? Weird name. I can't say anything. Uh, you know, some people just have different you know, European names. I don't know. Fuck, I don't know his name. I don't know who he is. He may be an industry person. I don't know. Um, but... Yes, they've been together so for 14 years, and it was actually only a couple years ago that uh, the Jim Parsons came out publicly as gay. And I think it was one of those things where everybody inside knew, everybody who knew him knew, kind of like, I think it was kind of like Anderson Cooper. Everybody who knew him knew, but he just hadn't talked about it openly in the media and shit like that. Um, but... Yeah, so, and he's talked since then, he's talked in a, about, you know, would you ever get married, and he's, we're not in a big rush, blah, 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 but they decided this, just this last week, they were going to get married, and it's just kind of, congratulations to to Jim Parsons and to Scott, and I don't know, I, the only reason I pulled this story was, was on account of, this is a big name. And it's another one of those, they've been together a long-ass time, and only recently have been legally able to get married, which, you know, you know, people can complain and have their view one way or another. I think everybody deserves the right to get married one way or another. It shouldn't, you know, I don't care, gay, straight, furry, whatever, you know, two human beings should have the right to get married as long as there's no, like, criminal activity going on. You're not, you know... Not child brides and shit like that. Uh, anyway. Okay. Just kind of throwing that out there. Alright. Well, I'm going to take my first little uh, Potter and Family promo break. And I'll be right back with the weird shit from the news. Your guide to cinema etiquette for the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews Podcast. Question 17. When choosing a seat at a largely empty movie cinema, do you... A. Sit directly in front of another person. B. Sit right alongside a couple clearly enamored with one another. Or C. Take a seat away from other patrons that afford you a good view. If you answered A or B, fuck you! For more useful cinema etiquette, join Paul and Wayne on the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast at Podomatic on iTunes or your favorite podcast app.
What's up, guys? This is Epic Film Guy Nick here, and I just want to take a few moments to tell you about an excellent podcast that I personally listen to called Ice and the Face. All right, now, if you're a fan of dystopian and even nihilistic comedy, this is the show for you. Rick and Sarah take the most ridiculous news items in the world every single week, and they just tear these stories down, all while having a great, great laugh. They're usually joined by guests who jump right in on the fun, and it's just a great time. They just launched a Patreon over at patreon.com slash ice in the face, so you can also support them. But if you're not listening to this show, what you need to do is go to their website at iceintheface.com, or jump over on your favorite podcasting app and subscribe to Ice in the Face. I promise you'll listen for two minutes and you will be hooked just like I am. So go ahead and give it a listen and back to your regularly scheduled program. Okay, starting off this week's in, in weird shit, and I was I was kind of uh, con- conflicted, torn on whether I should throw this under entertainment. But if you've been married for a while, maybe things are are getting a little stale in the bedroom area. I don't know. I've I've been married for eight years. Now I'm gonna not gonna say we're not at that point yet. But if you are, if you've been married for a while or in a relationship for a long while, or maybe you guys just think each other are boring, I don't know. I don't know you and and your your physical relationshipness. There are a, a couple of porn stars who are teaching advanced sex positions to, uh, it says to, to moms, uh, I'm assuming that both sides of this relationship are, are involved. Um, but yeah, so you need to spice up things in the bedroom. There's some porn stars that'll teach you a lesson on how to, they'll give you the more advanced, as they put it, advanced maneuvers to to change things up, you know, because... You know, when you've been married for 30 years, you want to do that. What's the... Yeah, let's... Fuck. Yeah, you're going to try the pile driver uh, or the erotic accordion. Because you're not going to break anything. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I understand the principle of this. I get it. I totally understand where they're coming from. It makes sense in theory. Let's take people who are professionals at sex and have them teach people who aren't necessarily professionals, who are just hobbyists. <laughs> is that, I don't know, is that how you would describe a, just a normal person? Um, but you're not paid for it. They're paid for it. They have to learn these things. They have to make it look good and be exciting. And they're, they, they make money in doing this shit. So... Hey, we're going to teach you how to sex really well. Uh, <laughs> I don't write this shit. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, they started promoting this uh, for Mother's Day. But yeah, they, they teach uh, extreme advanced sex positions to help you spice up your, your marriage or your relationship or whatever. And again, great idea in theory. But the you know, 60-year-old housewife or the 45-year-old housewife may or may not be able to do that particular thing with her feet. Um, The erotic accordion may be a little too advanced for the mother of three high schoolers. She might hurt something or break something or I just can't get my, my head into that position. I, I, yeah, again, great idea in theory. In practicality, I think it's a little troublesome, and I think they might eventually have some, uh, I think they need to sign some waivers about if you're not going to sue us if you happen to, uh, you know, crane your neck. Um, (laughs) It's, 
it's fun. It's funny. Uh, it's it's a it's a good idea. I I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. And just on it, not even because I think that it's a that like oh it'll beat me up. I'm still relatively young. I'm in my thirties. I could. I'm flexible. My wife is flexible. We could. Uh, no. No. I'm, yeah, just not taking lessons from a porn star. Sorry. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let's go one more. No, no, fuck, I got a bunch of stuff. Um, this one's a, I'm going to call this one a, another PSA warning here. So, an Ohio police officer accidentally overdosed on drugs after a traffic stop by brushing it off his clothes. I did I I think I may have, I'm not 100% sure that I've heard of fentanyl. It's a synthetic opioid. So it's basically like it's 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 like an extreme uh pain medication. See, it's 100 times stronger than morphine. Like you, if you're prescribed this shit, you get a tablet that's like 99% uh, uh, filler, basically. They said it's given in micrograms. That, like, a tablet of this stuff the size of a standard aspirin would kill you. And it can be absorbed through the skin. Joy. Um, long story short, drug bust, drugs all over the car. They bag everything up. They take it off to evidence lockup. One officer looks at the other like, hey, you got something on your shirt. He goes, you're not wearing protective gear anymore. He goes, brushes it off without thinking. And then it hits him, and then he ODs. And they said it took four doses of a of the anti-narcotic, like the anti-opiate medication to bring him out, and he's still sick. And apparently the guys that... They bust. They got in the drug bust. Worse, are sick and in the hospital too because you're fucking dealing in a drug that can be absorbed through the skin. You fucking morons. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of crazy. I I I know there's crazy ass drugs out there. I didn't realize there was a drug out there that was a that fucking strong, and b that could be absorbed. They could knock you out that hard, that fast through the skin that shit's just dangerous and the the article that i found actually warns about it they're like we're not concerned about this thing as a street drug we're worried about this as a weapon they're like what if somebody got their hands on this drug they could walk into a building just take a bag of it and just dump it out and watch the entire room drop I'm like, yeah, this shit, it's not, don't, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'm not worried about this shit as a drug. I'm worried about this shit as a fucking chemical weapon. The fact that there's a fucking, you know, synthetic morphine or synthetic opiate drug that is that damn strong. Who the fuck comes up with this shit? You don't need drugs that strong. We've got drugs already that are too strong for shit. We've got people getting addicted to drugs that are hundreds of years old. We don't need to make stronger versions of them. We got cops getting nearly killed because of a synthetic drug that we don't need. That for, that is a real, that's like a legitimate pharmaceutical drug. This isn't a street drug. It's not ecstasy. It's being sold as a street drug like every other fucking thing. But this is a legit pharmaceutical that's just being passed off as a street drug that could kill you accidentally. That's just there. It shouldn't exist. We don't need that shit. Oh fuck. Okay. Next up, let's see. La la la. Now this week I did a I did something different. I went with I've got a few stories and I've, I normally run through the jackass of the week. Now the thing this week is I had some a, a couple of good ones, so I left it up to you. I put up the poll on Facebook and Twitter asking who should be the jackass of the week. And so, 
without, I'll, I'll just pop up, I'll do these things kind of Miss America style. Our second runner up goes to the cheerleader who was arrested over her uniforms. Now, this is one of those crazy misleading titles. Um, long story short, this cheerleader really liked her cheer uniforms. And when the year ended and it was time to turn them back in, because they have to do that, I imagine, uh, she didn't want them. So she called the cops and said she was robbed. And the only thing they stole was her uniforms. What a dumb bitch. Yep, didn't take any money, no... They didn't take your any of your TVs, your phones, your jewelry, nothing else. But they broke into your bedroom and they just took your cheerleading uniforms out of your closet. And that was it. Never mind that really flimsy story. When the police came to investigate and check the crime scene, look what's fucking right there. It's two brand new fucking cheerleading uniforms, all nice and pressed and shit because, you know, the cheerleaders... So she was arrested for filing a false police report. <laughs> really? Is your life so sad that you you have to hold on to your cheerleading uniform? You've got a lot of other shit, I'm sure. You know, I... Yeah. It's... Uh, cheerleading is not the world. Yeah. Despite what Bring It On will tell you, cheerleading is not the end of the world. So... You have a nice. I mean, she's probably. It's it's a fucking. It's a nothing. It, it's it's not a big deal. But it's the fact that she was so dumb as it was like, hey, fuck. At least staged something. You know, say they were lost. Shit. Don't fucking call the cops and say they stole your uniform, you idiot. Huh. All right. Now, fun thing. We actually have a tie for first place. The fun part being, since Twitter was just a, hey, click here, solid votes. Facebook was all in comments. So, you guys actually kind of did the work of breaking the tie for me. Because a lot of you who voted uh, for Story B also said, oh, this one's great, but this one should totally be it, too. So, that's my second choice. So... You guys kind of... I'm giving you guys half points for your second vote. Which either way breaks the tie. Because you're like, hey, this one and that one. Nobody fucking voted for the cheerleaders. Seriously. There's only like a couple of people on Twitter voted for the cheerleaders. But... Coming in, our first runner-up... Is... Fuck. The... <laughs> going back to drugs... Because the article won't pop up... Apparently, drug users in the UK are complaining about the new money. And why are they complaining about the new money? Because the new five-pound notes made of plastic are cutting their noses when they're trying to snort cocaine. <laughs> That's right. This new money is no good for my cocaine. I don't know what accent I'm doing right now. It's definitely not English. <laughs> I don't know. I just went for something and it failed. Miserably, miserably. But, yeah. They're freaking complain. They're calling it... I don't know if it's Winston or Winstone because... Oh, uh, I guess Winston Churchill is on the fucking uh, bill. But... Yeah... They're complaining about the... Really? <laughs> They're complaining about the new money cutting their nose snorting cocaine. But it's fucking cocaine. You're going to get a nosebleed from it anyway. Is it really matter if you got the nosebleed from the money too? Here's a novel idea. Stop snorting cocaine. I, sn I say as I keep sniffling, I swear I don't do drugs. I'm just a little sniffly. Um, 
We need a little bit more magic dust here. I, I just think it's just a, it's it's just a funny shit. It, like really, because not only are they being dumbasses and cutting their noses, don't you have any paper money? Some use a different fucking bill, you idiot. Um, yeah. And these bills have been the people have bitched about these bills anyway because they're plastic, but they're apparently made of. They include some animal fats and, and and whatever the hell. There's animal byproducts used in the making of the plastic for the bills. So vegans are all pissed that the money isn't vegetarian. It's fucking money. Are you eating it? No? Then shut the fuck up. It's money. Don't put it up your nose. Don't eat it. Don't worry about what the contents are. And how about you stop doing cocaine? Uh, yeah. Really. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they're fucking complaining about the stop doing drugs. That's the that's the job. Stop fucking doing drugs. Uh, but that means the the winner of this week's jackass of the week goes to a pastor in Zimbabwe who was eaten alive by crocodiles while trying to walk on water like Jesus. Okay, so I understand when you're a person of faith and you want to recreate miracles like those people in the South who who handle snakes and drink poison and speak in tongues and all those that crazy shit. I understand if you do things out of faith that defy logic and convention. What I don't understand is when you think that you can defy physics across a river called the Crocodile River. I'm just going to say, if you're going to try walking on water, I suggest you try practicing in maybe a swimming pool. Maybe uh, some place where you won't get eaten alive. Maybe, fuck, piranhas would have been a better choice. You tried to walk across crocodile-infested waters. You've seen one too many Chris Angel specials, and I'm just going to say, it's fake. Chris Angel walks on glass. You walked on crocodiles and got eaten. And I realize I'm make I'm talking to a dead person, but you know what? I'm and I realize that I'm sitting here making fun of somebody who died. But you know what? There's a reason there's a Darwin Awards. This fucker's going in the goddamn Hall of Fame because that's just dumb. It's just it's it's so dumb that other words for dumb are just insulting to the level of stupidity that it is. And the other words for stupidity all go into explaining things in a much better way. No, this is just fucking dumb. This is this is kindergarten level dumb. Five-year-olds know you can't walk on water. Okay? Five-year-olds in Bible school know a normal person cannot walk on water. Don't. Don't be stupid. Don't walk across crocodile-infested water. You will die like this guy. And then people like me will make fun of you. But now it's time for me to take my last little break and share some words from my friends in the Pottern family. Want to know the story behind Pottern Family? Pottern Family started with a hashtag for indie podcasters. The podcasters who do this for fun and because we're passionate. We're not the big podcast you hear about, most likely. We don't have 10 to 15 people helping us with production. But that doesn't mean the quality and content you're getting isn't as good as any of those shows. Is there an area of interest you like talking to people about? Listen to an indie podcast on that topic. The hosts are incredibly reachable. We're basically clamoring to hear from listeners. We're just as much your fans as you are ours. No matter what you're interested in, Pottern Family's got a show for you. 
Like movies and TV? Check out the Epic Film Guys, the Something Something cast, the Boxers, or the Countdown movie and TV review. Do you like comedy? Check out Everyone Has a Podcast, the One Word Go Show, Afterburn 739, Now That I'm Older, Rick and Paul Heal the World, or Off in the Weeds. How about random trivia and fun facts? Check out The Endless Knot or The Story Behind. Like comic books and geek culture? Check out Geek Yogurt Podcast or Little Geek Lost. I could go on and believe me when I say there are a whole lot more where that came from. But you can find all these and more by searching the hashtag Potter and Family on Twitter. Uh, is it working? I think so. I don't I don't know. The thing is on. Well, I, I know, but I wanted to tell him about our podcast, but I don't know if the, you know, the, the thingy is working. What are you going to say? I don't know. I, I was thinking like, hey, I'm Joe and you're Matt and you're Becky and we host pre-recorded live every Tuesday. We talk about geeky stuff. You know, something, you know, like that. At pre-rec live on Twitter, facebook.com backslash pre-rec live, pre-rec live dot wix dot com backslash podcast. Yeah. Okay. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, a bunch of podcast apps. Mm. All right. Well, okay. Is it ready? Yeah. Start talking now. <laughs> Now, this is the part of the show where I normally do recommended listening, which would just be me kind of pitching my uh, a recommended podcast to you because I love podcasts. I love producing my two shows. I am a glutton for punishment and may I'm, I'm seriously considering starting a third because I'm just crazy like that. But I, I, lo- I do enjoy sharing the shows that I enjoy with you. That being said, I've already pointed out multiple times, this week I'm behind schedule. And I didn't have a show picked out. Not that I don't have a recommendation I could pull out of my ass, but I like to do, I mean, if you, like I said, if you've listened before, you know I kind of put a little something together to showcase the show. And I just didn't have the time for that this week to give the proper due to any of the, any of the shows in my collection. Uh... So, this week, I'm just kind of going back and and recalling uh, the guys at PRL are on a break this week. Uh, Emily from The Story Behind, who you just heard, also is on baby break right now after her having her son. And she just finished up this week a a 10-part series that she did. She kind of pre-recorded and prepped because she's way more prepared than me. Uh, that she prepped for her baby break uh, on We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel, which is a great song. I love that fucking song. I seriously, every time I listen to the next episode, I go back and I've been listening to the song again just to catch the references as she explains what it is. Then I go back and what line is that? And, And keep, I've listened to that song way too many times while in the last few weeks. Uh, and at the same time, the guys at PRL are on a break right now, busy, you know, fixing up the studio, painting, re- retooling things, and they're going to be out for a month. And I'm sitting here, well, fuck, there's three hours of my podcast week gone. Uh, fortunately for me, they've been doing some like Facebook live streams, and they've been doing, they started watching that show, American Gods. And doing some like after show stuff with that. And it's been fun to listen to. And so it's, it's, I suggest one, first off, you should be listening to both of these shows anyway. You should be listening to the story behind. You should be listening to pre recorded live. Not because I said so, but because they're good shows. Emily gives you a shit ton of information on the story behind in a very small amount of time. Uh, always fun to learn new things from Emily and she's funny and she's funny without beating you over the head with it. If you want to be beaten over the head with funny, that's where you go to pre-recorded live because they're just a bunch of nerds who like to, you know, crack jokes and be goofy while talking nerd stuff. Um, you know, well, but they, they can, they've had some serious discussions and they, they talk news and they talk, video games and and all that other sorts of fun shit 
but they're goofy and silly, much like you heard in the the little promo there. And even while they're on break right now, like I said, they're doing Facebook Live stuff. They're Matt from uh, PRL basically did 40 minutes while he just sat there chomping fucking 9,000 Scoville hot sauce and you just slowly watch his face melt. Uh, I, and I watched him out and I talked to him afterwards and he was like, I, think I just threw up after all. It was just too bad. I was like, yeah, because you were just sitting there fucking chowing hot sauce, jackass. But, you know, <laughs> people, people, I, I think I've tuned in for every post show live stream they've done because I have no life because uh, <laughs> I can do that while I'm watching the kids but yeah it's I'm, I just want you should go back and check out the the list of shows uh, you should go back to check out odddadout.blogspot.com click on recommended listening and there's so many shows in there that I've I've hit to now I'm going like I said I'm going to say those two are my favorites of all of the the indie shows that I've gotten into through the Potter and Family group. Those two have become some of my favorites because they're also nice people that I've built a relationship with and and chat with every now and then. And so they're really funny. And I love listening to them and I'm hoping coming up after their break is over and summertime is is among us and school is out that I will I'm trying to work my way into being a guest on on pre-recorded live because it's it's something that we've been talking about doing ever since I put them on here for recommended listening the first time and the relationship I've built with those guys they're really great and so I'm trying to get my get over there and and chat with them because it's always been like through text and and Twitter and things like that, and so to actually sit there and converse with them in an in an audio way would be kind of fun. So uh, I guess keep an ear open for that. You could be you're gonna have to subscribe to PRL for that anyway. But yeah, that's just me kind of around because like I said, I I I, I did wasn't. I just was not, I didn't have the time to prepare as much this week. You know, I just didn't. Uh, but it's this sort of rambling stuff that back in the day was the show. It was just me rambling. And I've very much pulled away from that. And what I'm thinking, like I said, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. I'm thinking about starting another show. And for all intents and purposes, the show I'm intending to start is that show. It's basically taking what this used to be, where it was a lot of just me rambling and and expressing my thoughts, and doing that again. Getting away from the formattedness of it. Maybe just sitting down and talking to somebody and, hey, what do you want to talk about today? That's where I'm going to get... That's where I'm going to sit down with people. That's where I'm going to talk to somebody. Now... This is all going to take development because I've been doing this for two years. And if my two years of doing everything the wrong way has taught me anything, <laughs> you should plan shit out. At least in the sense of, know what the fuck I'm going to do for the show. What am I going to do? Get shit pieced together. So I'm going to do that. And if it, if it all f- comes together... I will do that and I will release that show. I've got the name. I've got it all set up. But I do think that it, I'm going to try and do it right this time. And and add that final tick, that big third show to the Odd Dad Out Network. So, you know, stay tuned for that. I will keep you updated. But until then... You can catch all of the past episodes at odddadout.blogspot.com. While you're there, click on one of the subscribe links. I have Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, you name it. It's, that way, 
you will always get the latest episodes straight to your phone or your mo- other mobile device or your computer or wherever you uh, listen to your favorite podcast. Have it right there ready for you. You can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at OddDadOut or leave me an email, OddDadOut at gmail.com. And hey, while you're doing all these fun, crazy things, how about you leave me a review over there on that little Apple podcast thing so I know what you think. So I know what parts of the show you enjoy, what parts you don't enjoy. And maybe I'll give you a shout out on the show. Or if you really want to shout out on the show, consider being a sponsor. There's a little donate button up there. You can donate, do a one-time donation through PayPal. Or you could join our current sponsor, Lily, who's really awesome, who's a great artist, who I think I might see if she can work out some new artwork for me. Because why the hell not when you've got a sponsor who's an artist? Um... And see where, and she can help me with the development of the new show. See, I'm using my my new resources provided to me by my awesome sponsor Lily, and you can be one of those awesome sponsors and get crazy shoutouts and me talking you up like that by clicking the donate link at odddadout.blogspot.com. But until then, I've been Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. Thank you and good night. <laughs>